Hello, friends. Welcome to the Lug Life Podcast. My name is Adam. My name is Sherry. Sherry Beth, what episode is this? Number 52. Okay, so one of the things that Sherry and I both really are kind of interested in are personality tests. Yeah. We've done a number of them. We've done Myers-Briggs. Uh, you guys will remember last year here on the podcast, we did an episode all about the Enneagram. Yep. And you and I both were kind of fascinated by them. I am, yes. I think that is really interesting. It is interesting. Some of them you take and it's like, oh, that nailed it. That's totally me. Some of them it's like, uh, I don't really feel like that's me much. So I feel like we've done a lot of them. But then earlier here in 2022, just in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. you brought one up to me, a personality test that I had never heard of. Yes. So this is one that um, the leadership team at work, um, we all had to do it. Mm -hmm. And... Um, nice humble brag about being on the leadership team at work. <laughs> You're welcome. So, and I had never heard of it before. Um, I was told that I had to go do this. Yep. So, um, obviously, like, I went and, and did the little test. And then I kind of got digging into my profile. And it's it's fascinating. And I think that this is one of the better ones Yeah. I, as far as personality tests go. I agree. And just so you guys know, it's called 16 Personalities. Uh, and you can take the test. It's for free completely at 16personalities.com. It's 16personalities. Yeah, hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, just the numbers, 16. Um, and just kind of like most personality tests, they ask you a series of questions. Mm -hmm. Sherry Beth, how long about do you think it took you to do? 10 minutes or so, 10, maybe a little more. That's probably about right. Mm -hmm. And then they give you... Uh, they give you your results. Yeah. Now, with most personality tests also, you they try to get you to pay to get, like, even more results. Right. There's, like, a premium profile. Um, we have not done that. No. Nope. I haven't paid for that. So nope. I don't know what all that entails. Um, I've just stuck with the free one. But even just the free one has so much information. It is. It's really good. So when you get done, it kind of groups you into what your personality type is. Yep. Um, based on, like, 16 personalities. Yep. Um, Sherry Beth... Tell us, now, for those of you listening, a lot of this won't be necessarily, I don't want to say new information, but I feel like both of these were really accurate for us. Yeah. So I think you guys will kind of see that as we talk about who it says we are. Yep. So I am an INFJ-T. Yep. Um, so that means that I am introverted, mm -hmm. intuitive, feeling, judging, and turbulent. Okay. So I'm an ENFP-A. So that means I'm extroverted, intuitive, feeling, prospecting, and assertive. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, one of the things I think I think is kind of cool is that they give you a almost like a title to your personality. Yep. So my personality type is an assertive campaigner. That's what they called me. Yep. I'm a turbulent advocate. Okay. Um, and so my now let's talk a little bit one of the things i think was so interesting that i appreciated the most was it broke down your personality into five five kind of categories and yep. the categories are mind energy nature tactics and identity and i'm going to give you a description of each of these as we go through mm -hmm. and just kind of let you know sharing my scores in this yep so they gave us a percentage score about like where we are on this yep um, scale. So the first one is mind. And this trait determines how we interact with our environment. Mm -hmm. um, and this is either introverted or extroverted. Sherry, I'm assuming you are extroverted. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> incorrect, sir. What were your scores? I am 84% introverted. Okay. I, um, <laughs> I am 74% extroverted. Right. We are pretty far. Pretty far, yeah. Tell me what it says. It says you're mostly introverted. Mostly introverted. Introverted individuals prefer solitary activities and get exhausted by social interaction. They tend to be quite sensitive to external stimulation, like sound, sight, or smell in general. I would say that very much describes you. Yes. I would agree. 84% extroverted. Yep. Um, so mine says you're mostly extroverted. Um, extroverted individuals prefer group activities get energized by social interaction. They tend to be more enthusiastic and more easily excited than introverts. What? Is that, does that describe <laughs> me at all? It, well, yes, it really does. <laughs> Except here's here's one thing I do want to say. Mm -hmm. I bet my score 10 years ago, 
I bet I would have been 84% extroverted. More, yeah. I feel like the older I get, the more I'm wanting some introvertedness in my life. Yep. So you are 26% introverted. So there is a, about a quarter, a quarter of, of you me. who does want alone time once in a while. The other quarter of me just wants to be really annoying, loud, see other people the and The three dance. quarters of you, yes. The three, yeah, the three, the three, <laughs> the three quarters of me. Um, would you say that your what you think your score introverted extroverted Mm -hmm. do you think that that has been true over your life do you feel like as you're getting older you're getting more introverted more extroverted i feel like i'm getting more introverted the older i get interesting yep because you like people less and less well (laughs) people are turning out to be garbage more and more (laughs) um yeah i i do think that i i'm more introverted than i used to be i think i've always been introverted i think i would have always been on that side of the scale okay um but i do think that i'm more so than i was okay i yeah i could see that Mm -hmm. um so the next kind of box has to do with what they call energy and energy is the trait that shows where we direct our mental energy Mm -hmm. and kind of the two sides of this are intuitive or observant Mm -hmm. so i am 72 percent intuitive and 28 percent observant yep I'm 61% intuitive and 39% observant. Okay, so we're both intuitive. And what yep. it says about that, it says intuitive individuals are very imaginative, open-minded, and curious. They prefer novelty over stability and focus on hidden, hidden meetings and future possibilities. Yep. Do you think that's true for both of I us? I think that's accurate. I do too. Yep. It's interesting because in a lot of these personalities, this is one of the things that I like about 16 personalities. In a lot of these personality tests... Um, Sherry and I can be on the opposite side, it seems like, of almost everything. Yeah. You know, like, we Mm -hmm. we are very different people, but I haven't found a personality test until this one that sort of did highlight the areas that we are also similar. Yeah. Yeah. And I really like that. So I think that when we've done, like, the Myers-Briggs, which is where, like, the INFP and Uh ENFP come, or INFJ, um... An ENFP come from, I do think that we, um, those are like the scores or those are like the letters that we got in that as well. Yes. Um, that's not different, but I think that I feel like this, the 16 personalities kind of goes into more, um, I don't know, specifics, I guess, about the ways that we are similar and not so. just the ways that we're different. Completely. Um, and the next one uh, is another one that we were very close on. It, yes. The next the next box is called nature. Um, and nature says uh, that this trait determines how we make decisions and how we cope with emotions. Mm-hmm. So on one side, you have thinking. On the other side, you have feeling. Yep. Sherry, you and I both. I'm actually a little bit surprised about this with you. Oh, wait. You're surprised about this with me? Yeah. I'm surprised about this with you. Really? Yes. Okay, so I'm 74% feeling. Yeah. Um, and you are 85% feeling. I thought I'd be 100% feeling. Really? I just feel like you're so much more logical than me. I feel like I <laughs> um, I base so much of my, um, I don't know, decision making on feelings. And I try really hard not to because i will overthink it but see to me and that's the thing is that you're such an overthinker (laughs) that i thought you would for sure be on the thinking side in fact let me describe this and i'll tell you why i thought i'd be a (laughs) hundred percent feeling individuals are sensitive and emotionally expressive they are more empathetic and less competitive than thinking types and focus on social harmony and cooperation yeah but i think that describes me you don't think that describes me um Less com- maybe this is clouded when it says less competitive because we've been playing Boggle a lot recently, <laughs> and you just like I-, I am competitive in games, but in like life, yeah. I'm <laughs> here's what I'll say. I'm surprised at the seventy four percent. Okay. Okay. Um, I thought that you would be more than fifty percent thinking. Okay. Is kind of what I thought. Interesting. So, um, Sherry's looking up some additional like information on that. So the next box uh-huh. is called tactics. Uh, this trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making. Um, and this is one that we are very different on. Well, not very different necessarily, but yeah, a little more different. So I am, and I think that this is where um, 
I, so on some Myers-Briggs tests, I come out INTJ. Mm-hmm. And on some, I come out, or um, IN, wait, what is the? INF? INF. Yeah. No. Well, I don't know. Whichever one is the prospecting. So INT, INFP? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and on this one, I am 58% judging. So I'm like pretty close to like that halfway mark. So I, I can kind of go either way. Tell me I what think. what does judging mean? The, um, so the tactics, this trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making. Judging goes on... Um, it says judging individuals are decisive, thorough, and highly organized. They value clarity, predictability, and closure, preferring structure and planning to spontaneity. Um, I am not decisive, even in the least, but I am thorough and highly organized. Yeah, and you definitely prefer structure and spontaneity. Yes. And so I'm a little surprised that your judging isn't a little bit higher. Oh, okay. Um, for me... I am 67% the opposite direction. <laughs> I am a prospector, uh-huh. not a judger. Uh, and what prospecting is, is prospecting individuals are very good at improvising and spotting opportunities. They tend to be flexible, relaxed, nonconformists who prefer keeping their options open. Yep. What do you think? Yes, That's I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. And here's the thing. I think that I am less judging because of that decisive decisiveness mm-hmm. um because on any of the questions that had to do with like you're really great at making decisions i was like nope not even at all yeah and i think that it had i been like yep or even a little bit i think that it, it would have swung moved it. me farther that makes yep. sense that makes sense so now we're going into the last one uh which is identity yep and identity was one uh identity for me was the one that i was the most i don't know evenly balanced in um, so identity is, it says this trait underpins all others. It shows how confident we are in our abilities and our decisions. Mm-hmm. So on one side you have assertive, on the other side you have turbulent. Mm-hmm. I am 51% assertive, 49% turbulent. <laughs> so pretty even. Pretty even. Um, it says you're mostly assertive by 1%. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says assertive individuals are self-assured, even tempered, and resistant to stress. They refuse to worry too much and to not push themselves too hard when it comes to achieving goals. Um, you I can see that, but I can also see why you're... Balanced. Pretty balanced. Yeah, so you're on the other side. I am mostly turbulent by 74%. Yeah. Um, turbulent individuals are self-conscious and sensitive to stress. They are likely to experience a wide range of emotions and to be success-driven, perfectionistic, and eager to improve. Mm-hmm. And yes. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> that's me for Completely, sure. That nailed you. Yes. And so this is the, the uh, I don't know, piece of the puzzle that I feel like the, the Myers-Briggs doesn't have. Mm-hmm. So this is that dash T or dash A. Um, and I feel like this is, is it's really good because it, like it says, it underpins all others, yep. showing how confident you are in all of these other areas. Completely. Um, it's and, really helpful. Yep. Um, so now, so that's kind of the oversight of like our scores and the scores based on that stuff is where they put us in different boxes. Yep. And we mentioned, um, I'm, I'm a, I'm an assertive campaigner. Yep. And I'm a turbulent advocate. So now I want to talk just a little bit about what that is, because one thing I like about 16 personalities is that they give you a ton of information. Yeah. For, so for in free. my 16 personalities, there are the advocates, the campaigners, and then there's 14 others. Yep. And so, so for me, I just want to read, um, I just want to read like this first paragraph, Sherry. Is that okay? Yep. And I want you guys, and Sherry, I'm going to ask you, do you think they nailed it for me? Okay. Am I indeed an assertive campaigner? Okay. So it says campaigners are true free spirits outgoing, open-hearted, and open-minded. With their lively, upbeat approach to life, they stand out in any crowd. But even though they can be the life of the party, campaigners don't just care about having a good time. These personality types run deep, as does their longing for meaningful, emotional connection with other people. Yes. Yeah? Absolutely, yes. Would you say that's like, oh, that's mostly Adam, or like, yeah, they nailed it. They nailed it. Yeah? Yep. I I actually kind of felt that too when I read that. I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. that's really good yes because i think that there are people who really just care about having a good time Uh like that's their personality that's what they care about um but as a campaigner you 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 have deeper feelings than that yeah and yes you want to have a good time 
but you do long for deeper connections than that. Very much so. So tell yep. us about tell us about yours. All right, you, you advocate. The advocate. All right, advocates are the rarest personality type of all. Okay, can we just stop there real quick? I think that's so interesting. It is interesting. The rarest personality type. You are a unicorn. Well, we already knew that. You are a, uni- <laughs> a glittery princess unicorn. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. Still, advocates leave their mark on the world. They have a deep sense of idealism and integrity, but they aren't idle dreamers. They take concrete steps to realize their goals and make a lasting impact. Um, do you want me to read the next? Yeah, read the next one. All right. Advocates' unique combination of personality traits makes them complex and quite versatile. For example... Advocates can speak with great passion and conviction, especially when standing up for their ideals. At other times, however, they may choose to be soft-spoken and understated, preferring to keep the peace rather than challenge others. It is so you. Yeah. It is so you. And, <laughs> I, I mean, it's it's crazy how much it nails you. Yeah. What do, what do you think? Yes, I think so. I think that, for the most part, I will choose to keep the peace. Mm-hmm. Um, I really hate conflict, and that's one of the things that they bring up later. Um, like, I will just avoid conflict at all costs. But when I truly am just, like, on the other side of that, like, I don't care about the conflict. I care more about my ideal. Yep. Um, I will let that be known. Well, and that's one of the things. I, I mean, <laughs> we, we had a friend. I think we had a number of friends, but one in particular that kind of stands out to me who basically talked about how, like, when Sherry speaks up, you listen because... Sherry's not one to just speak up to be heard or just speak up to share. She doesn't share things unless she genuinely believes them. Right. You know, and so it's like you speak up when you have actually something to say. When I have a conviction. As opposed to me who just loves hearing my voice. You just like to talk. Oh, very much so. (laughs) You have a really nice voice. Okay, don't flirt with me. We're doing a podcast. (laughs) Um, Okay, so one of the things, that's kind of the overview, the introduction to our personality types. Now, I want to get into, I think what's one of the most helpful parts of 16 personalities Mm -hmm. um they can so just you know when you're looking at the screen on the left hand side there's kind of a menu and there's like the introduction which we just read you a little bit of Mm -hmm. um there's strengths and weaknesses which is where we're going to go next and then there's like romantic relationships friendships parenthood career paths so we'll touch into some of those yeah we're not going to read every single word of everything but i do want to go into strengths and weaknesses because i thought that this was was really good um sherry let's Let's talk strengths first. Strengths for advocates. Yep. All right. Um, We are creative. Check. Yes for you. Insightful. Check. Principled. Check. Passionate. Um, You're passionate about things you care about. Yeah. Um, It says advocates can pursue their ideals with a single-mindedness that may catch others off guard. Ah, yeah. There you go. Um, And altruistic. Uh Uh-huh. What do you think? They generally aim to use their strengths for the greater good. I feel they like... They rarely enjoy succeeding at other people's expense. Mm. That's very you. That's very me. You are not the kind of person to... If getting ahead meant you had to cut somebody else down, you would choose to not get ahead. Correct. Yeah, that's yep. very much you. Yep. So for I don't me, want to step on other people to get ahead. True. So for me, my strengths as a campaigner uh, are curious. I'm yeah. curious like a cat. That's why my friends <laughs> That's why my friends call me whiskers. Um... <laughs> I am perceptive, uh-huh. enthusiastic. What? That one's a shock. Um, <laughs> excellent communicators. Yes. Um, festive. I just love that word so much. <laughs> like festive. I was like, oh, what a great descriptor though. Um, and then good natured. Yep. You think those are all strengths of mine? Yes. Thanks. Yep, for but, sure. But now... Let's talk weaknesses. Be, and here's why I think this is really important. Um, yep. This is one thing that I actually believe that personality tests don't focus on enough. Because to me, and you guys all know, I'm a huge Enneagram fan. And I'm an Enneagram 2. And I think Enneagram nails a lot. But to me, as I started to learn about the downside of being an Enneagram 2... Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, this is really important for me to know. And even for others right. around me to know. Yep. So, and that's one of the things I do like about the Enneagram is it does have, like, the toxic traits. Yeah, and that's so And you important. can dig into that because you can see where it can go if you don't really keep yourself in check. That's right. Because I think mm-hmm. that it's one thing to look at this and be like, oh, I'm a, I'm a cheerful, festive encourager. You know, and it's like, yes, but at the same time, we're not all always that. 
Well, and in that cheerful, festive encouragement, you can be manipulative. Completely. <laughs> and so I think that that's, I think that it's important to look at the personality uh-huh. weaknesses. Yep. And too often we focus on just like the, the great things about our personality without knowing like what some of those weaknesses can be. Yes. Um, so Sherry Beth, you want to start with your weaknesses or you want me to go? Um, I will start. I am not shocked at any of these. The, okay. And not I don't know what yours are. one single one. Let's hear them. Sensitive to criticism. Oh, 10 out of 10. Reluctant to open up. 11 out of 10. Perfectionistic. 12 out of 10. <laughs> avoiding the ordinary. That's avoiding the ordinary. Can you give me a little, what does it mean when so it says that? It says advocate personalities tend to be motivated by a sense of having a greater purpose in life. Oh, totally. They might consider it tedious or unnecessary to break their big visions into small manageable steps, but they may be setting themselves up for frustration if they don't turn their dreams into everyday routines and to-do lists. Without these specifics, their goals may never materialize. That's so good. Yep. So, yes. And then prone to burnout. What do you think? Um, I am not surprised at any of these. Okay. Uh, and I think the burnout one's interesting because it says advocates' perfectionism uh, and reserve may leave them with few options for letting off steam. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really interesting. Yes. It says people with this per- personality type can exhaust themselves if they don't find a way to balance their drive to help others with necessary self-care and rest. Yep. Um. And I think that this is where I have we done this podcast. I don't. We talked about it. Um, this is where like the rhythm of life comes in. Well, mm-hmm. I think that as an extremely introverted person and as an advocate, I have a tendency to want to escape yeah. more than rest. So my rest or my what what looks like my rest is more of an escape because I am on the verge of breakdown at all times. So I will say I don't think we've done cuz we were going to do a podcast about like Sabbath and rest and what the, what the way we do that. I don't know that we've done that podcast, but I think we may need to. I think it's on our list to do um and we can dig into that more, but yeah. I think that that's where this prone to burnout comes because I am constantly wanting to be perfect at everything. And when I'm not, it stresses me out and I want to retreat. I don't face it head on. I don't rest from it. I don't let myself like process that. I just escape. And so when you have downtime or you have a moment or you have a day, you just want to escape the reality. Yep. I want to escape into a book. I want to escape into a movie. I want to escape into something. I don't want to have to actually think about what's stressing me out. And we'll talk more in like our Sabbath and Healthy Rhythms podcast, Mm -hmm. but like none of those things, books, movies, none of that stuff is bad. Right. Right. Like that's, but when we use anything we use as an escape can be bad because like escapism is the birthplace of addiction. Right. And so, yeah, well, we need to do that podcast sooner rather than later. <laughs> yeah. So those are the weaknesses. Yep. Um, mine, I'm also not surprised. I don't think you will be either. Um, weakness for me, people pleasing. Mm-hmm. Um, says most campaigners are, and I love this, this term, uncomfortable with the prospect of being disliked. <laughs> it's so, that is such a good term. Yep. Um, unfocused. What? <laughs> what? What? I would not ever call no. you. <laughs> this next one not makes me, me laugh too. This next one, disorganized. 15 out of 10. 100%. <laughs> uh, overly accommodating. Oh, yeah. Um, that, yeah. Overly optimistic and restless. Yeah. And you know what's so interesting about these? And this is why it's really important to dive into, um, to dive into your personality because one, you could look at this and be like, oh, you're accommodating, you're optimistic. You're, um, yeah, but there's a negative to those things. And because you're overly accommodating, you're overly optimistic. And that's the thing is mm-hmm. that I think that this really nails my strengths and my weaknesses. And I just appreciate that they give you a focus on weaknesses mm-hmm. because I can look at this and be like, you know what? That is true about me. And then not just like look in the mirror and walk away unchanged. But like look in the mirror, see these weaknesses and be like, you know, these are things that I need to like pay attention to. These mm-hmm. are things I need to actively work toward being better at. Right. All that kind of stuff. Yep. So Sherry Beth, on the left hand side here, romantic relationships, friendships, parenthood, career paths, workplace habits, conclusion. Yep. Anything else you want to touch on here? Um, let's actually talk about friendships for a minute. Let's do it. Um, so because this was interesting to me too. Mm-hmm. Um and also not anything that I was shocked at. Okay. 
So for me, it says advocates have a deep desire for authenticity and sincerity in everything they do Hmm. from their daily activities to their relationships. As a result, people with this personality type rarely settle for friendships of convenience. Rather than rely on superficial interactions with the people they see every day at work or school, they generally prefer to have a close circle of confidants. Um, And I, that is very true. Yeah. I'm not necessarily just buddy buddy with everybody that, that I work with yep. or that I'm around all the time. If I don't feel a connection to you, you're just a person in my life. Yep. And and, th- and that's been true about you as, as long as I've known you. Yes. Like that's been you. Yep. Yep. So I'm, I just like, I just really love it. They really settle for friendships and convenience just because you're in my circle doesn't mean that you're actually part of my circle. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't think most people understand. So when you welcome somebody and let somebody into that inner circle of your life, because I know you so well, and because I see how rare that happens and how big of a deal it is, I don't always feel like they understand. But like, to me, I'm just like, oh my God, like share, this is like a new inner circle friend for Sherry, you know? And so it's like, it's a really big deal to watch because you're so selective about that and you're so protective yeah. that when you do, I just like, I celebrate and cheer every time because I just realize how, how big that is. Yeah. And I, and I think that like for you, like every person you meet is your best friend. Mm-hmm. And so there's some of it that's like, you don't, I think that partly you don't really understand why I'm so selective. Totally. Um, and I don't really understand why I'm so selective. That's just sort of who I am. But I'm not going to let you into these different parts of me if I don't fully trust you. Makes total sense. One of the things for me on friendships that just kind of hit me right in the the heart balls. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so it felt like it kicked me, the, channel, Adam. Kicked me right in the heart balls. <laughs> not on the podcast. Um, <laughs> is this kind of plays into the weakness about my personality types. You know, it talks about how... People with my personality type tend to be cheerful, supportive, always up for a little lighthearted banner or a deep heartfelt discussion. And I think that that's true for me. Like I love to have fun and good times, but yet when a friend comes to me with something really hard and really heavy, I never shy away from that. In fact, if anything, I love those conversations. Mm -hmm. Like I love being in the middle of people's mess and being with them as stuff falls apart Mm -hmm. because they know they're not alone. You know what I mean? Like I love that. And they know that they can trust you. Very much so. Yep. Um, but then it talks something about that just is really, really true that I don't know a lot of people would know about me. Um, it says, we're generous and giving. Uh, campaigners have much to offer in the realm of friendships. At times, however, they may struggle with the suspicion that they care more about their friends than their friends care about them. A suspicion that can leave these sociable, warm-hearted personalities feeling more than a little lonely. And it's so interesting because that's one of the things with Enneagram 2s, which Mm -hmm. I also am, is that you care so much for everybody else that it's like there are these, it's like there are these words and phrases that come into your head as you're loving everybody else. And it's like, yeah, but nobody loves you. Yeah, but nobody cares about you. And I can see, so, and we have talked about this in our marriage, Mm -hmm. you being a two and just giving of yourself at all times, um, sacrificing your wants and needs to make sure that my wants and needs are met. Mm-hmm. Um, I, as an Enneagram 5, am naturally selfish. Yep. And it, my my brain doesn't work like that. Like, right. it's not my first instinct to want to make sure that you are taken care of. Yep. And so for me... In our relationship, I know that it's lopsided because I know that, and it's not that I love you less Mm -hmm. or care about you less than you love or care about me. It's just that you're really good about acting on those and I'm not. Sure. That makes sense. I do think that, um, I do think that this is one of the things it talks about with like the suspicion. The other side of that I've noticed for people, for myself, as well as people like me, how simple it can be to pull us out of that feeling though. Mm -hmm. Um, Enneagram 2s or people like me, we don't need you to meet us and to give as much as we give. Because here's the reality. You never will. Right. I'm just going to be totally honest. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it will never happen. Right. I will never be a 2. That's right. Right. And and so I don't want friends or you or people to try to 
meet you halfway. No, or, I don't want that at all. Right. Um, for me, it's just literally do something. And that something <laughs> may even be a text or a message just being like, you know what? Life's been crazy now. We haven't connected. I just want to let you know I was just thinking about you. Literally, that's it. It doesn't have to be anything more than that. <laughs> you know? And some people might be like, well, that's pointless. What's the point of that? But for people like me, that pulls you out of that like lonely, dark place where you're questioning, man, like I'm doing everything for everybody else and literally nobody's doing anything for me. Right. We Whereas don't... for me, if I get a text like that, I'm just like, Ugh, you wasted my time. I had to open up a text to read that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Completely. Great. You're thinking about me. I don't care. Yeah, big deal. Nobody cares. <laughs> but like for, for twos or people who are like campaigners like me, mm -hmm. that's what pulls us out from like loneliness, darkness, depression, right. all that kind of stuff. And so I, I don't know. I was reading that friendship part and I was like, oh man, they nailed it. Yeah. They nailed it. Yep. All right. Um, anything else you want to talk about? Can we talk about workplace habits? Yes. Because this is kind of interesting. And I think like this is where, so because I had to do this for work, um, this is like the first place that I went because I was like, what does this mean about my workplace habits? Mm -hmm. So um, I feel like they hit the nail on the head with this one yeah, I remember for me that. as well. Um, so I'm going to just skip around a little bit here, but, um, advocates have some specific needs when it comes to a satisfying work environment. People with this personality type want to know that their work helps people and promotes their own personal growth. This means that their work must be in line with their values, principles, and beliefs. Uh, they tend to do best when they can ignore workplace politics and hierarchies and simply do what matters to them. That is so you. Yes. Like, I don't care what your title is. If there's a job to be done, just do it. Yes. And don't look down or up at me um, because of what my title is. We all have a job to do. Just do it. Just do it. Um, yes. So most people with this personality type prefer not to think of themselves as above or below anyone else, no matter where they are on the job ladder. <laughs> um Fortunately, advocates are resourceful and creative, and they can find ways to make nearly any position work for them. What do you think? I think that is very, very true. I think it's very true about you yep. as well. Yeah. Um, one of my thoughts in doing 16 personalities for the first time is, and here's the thing, you know, I have a team that I lead at work, and I don't want to become the guy that's like every quarter we're doing a different personality test. <laughs> that's annoying. Right. But I love that this gives you a workplace, like specific to workplaces. Yes. I'm kind of fascinated yep. by that. Pros and cons. Pros of, and cons, that's of right. your personality in the workplace. So for mine, it says, uh, with their warmth and open-mindedness, and this is where they hit it, the nail on the head. They had me from this first sentence. Campaigners often find ways to make their workplaces, and they give three words, creative, inspiring, and caring. Yeah. If I had to describe my ideal <laughs> workplace, it would literally be those three words. Yeah. Creative, inspiring, and caring. It yeah. says no matter where they may be on the career ladder, whether they're a brand new hire or a CEO, campaigners feel happiest when they have the time and freedom to explore new ideas. And if they can explore those ideas alongside other people who share their excitement, well, that's even better. Yes. So... We're going to read a little bit. I am, so they have advocate subordinates. Mm -hmm. And that's basically um, where, if you have a boss, yep. what, this is what your work environment should look like for you to thrive. Mm -hmm. um, as employees, they tend to gravitate toward managers who are open-minded and willing to consider their input. Advocates will also find a manager whose values align with their own and who offers them encouragement and praise. Uh, morale killers for these personalities may include strict rules, formal structures, and routine tasks. And that is very, very true. If yeah. you put me in a box, I am going to fight it every step of the way. Mm -hmm. that's, that's you. In fact, like even <laughs> as you read this to me the first time, we were both like, oh, nailed it. Yep. Absolutely. But then they go into colleagues and advocate managers and what that looks like. So I want you to read the managers because you are the head. Yeah. So it uh, says campaigner bosses don't talk down to the people who work for them. In fact, managers with this personality type behave much like they did before they were in charge. They establish real connections with their employees and they inspire by example rather than shouting orders from behind their desks. <laughs> It's, it's so... Yeah, it's, it's you. It's me. Yep. 100% me. Um, but 
Also, on the negative side, this is also me at the bottom. It says, fortunately, these personalities have the sensitivity and insight to recognize when their team needs more structure or discipline in order to thrive. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that I've had to realize kind of like as a campaigner manager mm -hmm. that I need to bring people with other personality types around me on our executive team who are really strong in areas that I'm weak. And so like right. when I look at our team, I, it's just such a healthy balance of different personalities and strength and all that stuff because I know that one thing that I don't bring to our team is structure and discipline and organization. You know what I mean? All yep. that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And so Sherry just pointed something on my screen. What do you want me to read? This paragraph right here. It says, however, not everyone shares this perspective on leadership. In the absence of clear orders, some employees may feel they're being expected to read campaigners' minds, and some teams may need strict deadlines and timetables in order to succeed in their projects. Well, that's exactly what I was just talking about. Right. Yep. That, like, I need, um, I need Carrie, who's on our executive team. Like, yep. I need Carrie um, to be a part of the team because she is so good at those things that I'm so weak at. Right. And that if I don't... Deadlines and structure and... If I don't have a Carrie... I could have a team that feels well cared for, you know, because I'm kind of pastoral, I'm very relational. Like we'd have a lot of fun, um, but nothing would really get done. They don't know when <laughs> deadlines are and when things need to be done. Right. Right. And so, yeah, I need. Um, it's one of it's one of my kind of core beliefs that I've had at going back, you know, a couple decades from when I was leading like hotel portfolios. You always staff to weakness. Like you always staff to weakness, whatever yeah. the, whatever my weakness is as a leader, the people that I surround myself with, um, need to be really strong where I'm weak. And I just love that kind of this pointed that out. So, yep. so then we get to the bottom, the conclusion. Conclusion. So I just want to read, here's like my kind of concluding statement. Um, mine says few personality types are as creative and charismatic as campaigners known for their idealism and enthusiasm. These personalities excel at dealing with unexpected challenges and brightening the lives of those around them. Yeah. What about you, Sherry Beth? I have lots of words for it, mine. Which which is funny because that's what somebody like you needs. <laughs> Not me. Give me two sentences. <laughs> mine says, few personality types are as passionate and enigmatic as advocates. That's true. As someone with this personality type, you stand out for your imagination, your compassion, your integrity, and your deeply held principles. Unlike many other idealistic types, however, you are also capable of turning your ideals into plans and executing them. Hmm. Yet advocates face challenges too. Even the most idealistic and dedicated of personality types can become frustrated when it comes to navigating interpersonal conflicts, confronting unpleasant facts, pursuing self-realization, or finding a fulfilling career path. As a result, you may sometimes find yourself questioning who you really are and who you're really meant to be. And that is me all of the times. Completely. So... Sure, Beth, <laughs> let's give our final thoughts on 16 personalities. I just really like it because um, I just, that kind of stuff. Like, I love that it gives you workplace habits, pros yeah. and cons, and where you fit as a, an employee and a colleague and a manager. Um, I love the strengths and weaknesses. I love in the, we didn't talk about this, but in the romantic relationships, it talks about the kind of people that you look for and will um, complement best. Yeah. So, you know what? We were going to end it. I don't want to. We're going to talk about romantic. Let's talk just... romantic. Okay. Because it's so interesting. Um, it really is. It, so, <laughs> because it's so right on. So here's mine. Mm -hmm. It's hard to overstate just how much campaigners care about love. <laughs> this is a passionate, warm, open-hearted personality type. One that brims with hopes and dreams, ideas and experiences. And campaigners bring every ounce of this vibrant energy to their romantic relationships. It says many campaigners harbor a deep longing to share their lives with another person. As a result, these personalities may feel a bit empty or uninspired when they're single. While their dedication to relationships is admirable, campaigners may need to guard against investing too much of their sense of self in their relationship status. It says when campaigners are interested in someone, they rarely hold back. And that's me. I'm, I, I'm going to be totally honest. I'm the second date I love you guy. <laughs> Let's be honest. But here's the crazy thing. I genuinely do. Right. That's yeah. the most awkward thing about me. Right. 
He's like, I really do. Like, it's not, it's not just like a word to try to get something. Like, I yeah. legit do. Like the next sentence there says, people with this personality type tend to fall in love easily and they fall hard. Oh, 100%. It says, campaigners shower their new flames with affection, trusting that the devotion and passion that they feel are real. That's the thing. That's genuinely how we are. It's not like, it's not like a fakeness thing. It's a, we we love quickly we love hard and we love very like visibly and openly yeah oh my gosh that's that's just so freaking true yeah what about yours well i'm a little bit different i was just gonna say i'm sure advocates tend to take the process of finding a romantic partner seriously people with this personality type look for depth and meaning in the relationship preferring not to settle for a match that's founding on anything less than true love it can take time for advocates to find uh, a compatible sounds, sounds partner. Exhausting. Some people might think advocates are too choosy. And it's true that these personalities can have unrealistic expectations. Some advocates might hold out for a perfect partner or relationship that ultimately doesn't exist. That said, advocates' idealism, if balanced with just enough realism, can actually enhance their love lives. Advocate personalities tend to be in touch with their core values so that they care about compa com compatibility as well as surface level attraction. This can help them avoid matches that aren't founded on authenticity or shared principles. Um, Pretty interesting. So it does, it, yeah. Um, it says they tend to look for ways to grow as individuals and strengthen their connection with their partner. This can help advocates' relationships reach a level of depth and sincerity of which many people can only dream. And I think that's true too. Yeah. Um, I think that, like, you and I have a really good relationship mm -hmm. and um i think that part of that is because you're just like love 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 all the time but also because i'm keeping us deep yeah. and authentic and honest yeah <laughs> <laughs> but mostly because you're just lovey yeah mostly because i'm 100 <laughs> mostly because it's like my constant pursuit and annoyance of, of love <laughs> Um, oh, man. You know what I would be interested mm -hmm. to know? And maybe it's in the premium profile you got to pay. Because <laughs> I'm thinking of even this in light of love languages. Oh. Because my love language, number one, is physical touch. Mm -hmm. And then number two would be words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. And so because I'm that, um, like, campaigner who just, like, passion, love, you know what I mean? Like love hard, love quickly, all that kind of stuff. If mm -hmm. if most people who have this are also physical touch people. Yeah. That's I feel like they'd have to be. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like they'd have to be. Yeah, probably. Whereas like people with your personality type over here, like that wouldn't matter as much because you're trying to figure out if this is worth it. Yes. And it, with as my love language is um, gifts mm -hmm. and what was my other one? Do you remember? Um, I think it's coffee. <laughs> no. Um, yours is Probably, yes. gifts, acts of service, and quality time. Okay. So. Yours are basically, there's five love languages. Yours are the three that mine are not. Right. <laughs> these, Correct. Literally the exact opposite. Yes. Um, which makes it just a lot of fun. So, um, <laughs> but yes, but when you think of advocates and Enneagram Vibes. Yeah. Um, I think that the, specifically the gift do you know me well enough to get me a gift that shows that you know me? Not just like a random, like not just like you stopped at the gas station and picked something up, but like which is which actually is kind of funny because I do want to pause real quick <laughs> because literally the first on our very first date I ended the night uh, we were leaving Denny's because you guys it was really classy, classy Denny's. Um, hey, Moon's over Miami is well, a no, great first date meal. No, I know. Um, <laughs> stopped and had to fill the vehicle up with gas and came out with a gas station rose. Yeah. So it is kind of funny that. I literally did everything wrong. Well, but here but we you're are. trying really hard, and you of haven't course, that's stopped what trying. I do. <laughs> didn't you? Didn't you just read that paragraph? That's literally what we do. <laughs> yes, but yeah, I think I think that that's where that falls, and so I think like gifts to me are my love language, and if you can give me a gift that shows that you know who I am, yeah. Um. And I think that's what relates back to, like, the advocate. Like, we want the deep relationship, the meaningful. Yep. Do you know who I am? There you go. And things that I like. Yeah. I love it. Yep. All right, Sherry. 16 personalities. You kind of gave a little bit of your wrap-up earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I got to say, um, I, I don't want to say I was skeptical when you brought this to me. 
but I kind of were a little skeptical. Well, I, I think <laughs> I think that what I felt was like, haven't we done enough of these? Like, don't we already know? But I'm so glad we did this to the point that I would rank this up there for me. Like this, if I had to pick three, um, I'm doing 16 personalities and you Graham love language. Like mm-hmm. I feel like those three really give you a healthy snapshot of who you are, both strengths and weaknesses, mm-hmm. as well as who the people around you are. So yes. that's what I feel like. I, I love it. And again, the website, you guys, 16, the number one, number six, personalities.com. Um, Go check it out. Again, you can take a free test. And and it's about 10, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. It is pretty funny, though, because this shows our personality difference. I fly through it. For me, it's like a five-minute test. For you, it's a 15-minute test, and yeah. so it balances out to a 10-minute test <laughs> for the average person. Yes, true. Because <laughs> you overthink everything. I overthink everything, and you just... you just I'm just like, nah, nah whatever. whatever. <laughs> I'm but with your it. whatever answers, it got you it got you pretty spot on. Completely. So, you guys, we want to hear from you. You all know us pretty well. Um, some of you have spent hundreds of hours with us <laughs> watching our lives on YouTube. Yep. Based on what you heard in this podcast, did 16 personalities get it right? Do you think they got it wrong? Was there anything about either of us that surprised you or that you thought would be different? Uh, we want to hear from you. And the way that we hear from you is actually over on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search Leg Life Podcast. You'll find our channel over there. Yep. Hit subscribe. Subscribe to that channel. We are over 300 subscribers yes. on the podcast channel. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then on this episode um, over there on YouTube, we want you to leave a comment and let us know the answer to that question. Yes. So, Sherry Beth, you glad we did this one? I am. I just, I am one of those who will, I want to read every single page on mm-hmm. this and I haven't yet. I haven't really dug into like everything but in the 16 personalities you can take different tests you can and like dig deeper into what your personality means yeah that, which is really fascinating to me too yeah that that's something that i i will not do <laughs> like i take the test i'm like all right passionate loving can be annoying over clingy got it that's me <laughs> like check move on recording the podcast yeah friends we love you yes episode 15 52? 52. 52. Yeah. In the books. We will see you next week on the Leg Life podcast. Bye. Bye.